Okay, where we left off, we uh, we had a little guy here. He was successfully jumping. And uh, one minor thing I changed along the way during the break was uh, I made this uh, move down just be 0 0.4. And I just thought that was a little bit better because it seems like he paused almost a moment before dropping to the ground. And it just became obvious that the, uh, the shadow wasn't hitting. And one other thing I should mention, too. Uh, you know, we're gonna. This is a long series. At least I'm planning on making this a long series on uh, on Sprite Kit, and uh, we didn't really go into the uh, the class reference here. So if you ever feel like uh, checking that out, you can always go to uh, SK Action, then uh, click in on um, the uh, the reference, and of course you might need to sign in, like I keep getting that prompt to do. And okay, so if you look inside of here, uh, you'll see that there are plenty more possible actions. Uh, move by X, uh, move two, that that could take you to a, an exact location. And actually, I say plenty more, but you know what? This is a this is not a, a ton. It's not baffling how many there are inside of here. But um, they they're nicely kind of uh, categorized inside of here, creating actions that rotate, uh, changing notes, animation speed, things like that and even playing sound so you know again we're gonna look at uh, more of these later there's one for a group too uh, previously we, we looked at a sequence where you're just going from one action to the next to the next to the next uh, but there's also a, a group one where you can kind of spawn a ton of them at once that's uh, kind of a Cocos 2D term right there for action spawning them and we can uh, even repeat actions and things like that so um, well I'll try to get a few more of those in here uh, in just a moment but uh, just so you're aware, you can always go and uh, kind of do a bit more research in the reference guide. And uh, so what are we at with this? Well, uh, let's go and uh, make it so that the scene uh, kind of resets or uh, starts the game over if you've uh, gotten enough damage done to you. And let's track that with a, uh, the, with a variable called hit count. So I'm going to go and just write in here int. And you know what? Let's organize these a bit better. Hint, hit count, and by default, when the scene opens up, this will always equal zero. So even if we were to reset the scene, it's going to go back and reset those variables again back down to uh, zero. And what we're going to check is if uh, when the damage is done, if your hit count is equal to three. Okay, now of course at some point in here we've got to increment that up some, but if that is the case, we're going to call self game over. And the reason I'm I'm testing this inside of our damage done statement is because uh, inside of uh, here when we actually do our damage, I want there to be a little bit of a flicker of pain. You know, the character turns red, and if we call this too soon, uh, it's it's sort of like that last boulder hits you and then immediately the game's over. Whereas with this, we can wait a little bit and uh, run this as part of a uh, an action or just put more of a delay in there. And, you know, people will be like, oh, I got hit. And then suddenly they see, yep, game over, right? All right, so if uh, just so we can get rid of this uh, annoying little uh, red dot, let's, uh, of course, write in here void, game over. And we don't uh, have to put anything in there for right now. Uh, let's go and then uh, increment up the uh, the damage or the hit count I should say so inside of our do damage that makes sense we can write inside of here a line like this hit count equals uh, hit count plus one or you can do the same thing by just writing plus plus like that so now we'll just uh, move it up one and I have no clue why okay Obviously, that it's just a weird little error there. Why, why that showed up? No, why is it back? Oh, this might not be a semicolon. I bet you that's. Oh yeah, there we go. Duh. I had the equal sign in there. <laughs> Programming 101. Okay, so now let's set up some actions inside of here. One fun one, of course, uh, when you uh, when you get hit by that boulder, you should get pushed back a little bit. So let's uh, put in another action here. This will, this will be called push equals sk action and again uh, let's go move by x and 
this time we actually will move by the x. We're going to go negative 50 there. And then on the y, we're going to leave it alone. So we're not going to push them at all on the y. And then uh, for the, uh, the amount of time this will take, let's just go with uh, 0 0.2 seconds. So it's a quick little pushback. And this will be kind of fun because it'll sort of seem like you're going to get pushed back toward the, uh, the, the cliff. And, you know, if you want to go the extra mile with this, you can, of course, program that functionality. And that would actually be a good kind of a test. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I need to... Uh, I need to refer to my um, my character yet again inside of here, and just for the heck of it, so you guys kind of get a little bit of a review here too. Uh, let's do this. Let's pass in the SK sprite node into this method as a parameter. Okay, and we'll call this. Uh, well, we can just call it character. Here. Okay, so now what we can do is uh, write character run action push of course the only problem is is that when we call when, previously when we called do damage there was no character getting uh, passed into this so we do need to go and find that yep sure enough we got that little red mark right here and just put that in and write character after that okay and by the way if you um if you're ever unsure of what's supposed to be in there after you've written your method, you can um, just write escape here, all right, and it's going to tell you the type that it is expecting inside of there, SK Sprite node. And it's a good thing then that we um, that we had cast our uh, node that we found, our child node with name character, as a actual SK Sprite node because if it was expecting us to pass that in as a SK sprite node well we better do it if it's expecting that okay so that push should be in there I'm gonna go stop the simulator from running and just uh, double check that, that is working and anytime you start passing something around via parameter it's, it's a good idea to check that out so there you go he, he is actually getting uh, pushed around gets pushed one more time of course by that third time he gets hit uh, we're gonna Gonna run the uh, game over, but uh, we'll save that for just a moment, and then let's move this off to the side for just a moment because I think I'm gonna need every bit of available space for this last one. SK action uh, pulse red, and of course we're gonna make him pulse red for a second. So we're gonna write SK action. This will be um, a sequence, and. Um, Previously, you guys all saw, I'm sure, that we put that uh, at symbol in there, and then we put in our our objects, and then we uh, closed off this little guy like so, right? And if you need a little review of that, well, we did that right over here. So here's where we set up our sequence, have that uh, at symbol open, closed, and then our final closing bracket. All right, so we're going to do pretty much the same thing down here, but... We're going to get fancy with it, and we're going to create our other actions while we are within this one line right here. Okay, And if you don't want to do it like that, <laughs> you certainly don't have to. And uh, don't worry about the, the extra white space in here. That does get ignored. All right, so we're going to put in here SK action, colorize with color, and we can put in here a fancy little way of uh, quickly getting a color. You write SK color and if you just put in red color Sprite Kit knows what you're talking about. For color blend factor we're gonna bump this up to 1.0 by default it would be at 0 and we're gonna make this occur over 0 0.1 frames. Um, zero, I said frames. 0 0.5 seconds. All right. And then um, you put that uh, comma in there just like you would if you were separating out your variable names for your actions like we were before. Uh, and I'm going to skip down another line here and I'm just going to write SK action colorize with blend factor or colorize with color blend factor and then I'm going to set this back down to zero again so it's going to take down my blend factor to the uh, default and we'll just do that over 0 0.5 seconds again close that off and put in the comma and finally SK action perform selector at so 
collector. And now I'm going to call damage done via this. And again, on target is going to be self. And uh, let's see, is that, uh, should just be telling me that it's unused, okay. So I don't need to call this anymore if, uh, via that line. And what I can do now is write the oops, character, run action, pulse red. Okay, so after this occurs, it's going to tell us that our damage has been done. It will call that. And let's just put in here a little log statement that um, verifies that uh, game over, man. There we go. All right, turns red. Let's see if I can avoid one. Yay, I did. All right, boom. And let's keep our eye down here. All right, so sure enough, after that, uh, after that third damage being done, it said uh, game over, man. And here's our opportunity to run an entirely new scene. SK scene. Let's just call this guy next scene. It's going to equal CS my scene. Wait a minute, that's the name of the class that we're in right now. Well, yeah, we're just going to rerun everything. Init with size. This will be self.size. So just the exact same size of this current uh, scene, which is the size of um, your device that you're running. And SK transition. There's some transition transitions in here already set up for you. And one of them is called uh, doors open vertical with duration. <laughs> And so we'll call our incident name for this uh, just doors, SK transition doors. Look at all these other options you get in here, and I'm sure there's plenty, plenty more if you had to look into them. Uh, doors open vertical with duration. Yep, that's the one for my notes. So 0 0.5. And <laughs> by the way, when I say notes, <laughs> there's not like a notepad here. I'm just <laughs> looking at the <laughs> Xcode project I worked on previously. And pre uh, pre so a self.view present scene, and then we're just gonna put it in here next scene, and then our, our parameter here is gonna be that transition of doors. Okay, so it's just three lines of code that takes care of that. And uh, obviously if uh, you want to show a different scene other than the one that you have, well that's uh, easy enough because uh, you know it didn't take much work to uh, well, actually, when we had our header and our implementation, our .h and our .m file, uh, when this was created, the, the .header file was practically blank. The .m file, we, we picked apart that, um, that template from in the previous video, so you know exactly what was going on with these files from the start. Uh, you can easily uh, create new files, new header files, new implementation files. Uh, just basically put in what you had before. Uh, one thing you will need to do, though, uh, so that your imp so that this scene file is aware of another class you'd have to go in at some point and put in here import in and then so like it could be cs uh, game menu dot h right and of course you'd get an error for that right now because it has no idea what you're talking about but uh, if that if those two class files were in there you'd be good to go so uh, let's uh, check this out one more time and again, creating other classes. It's all, it's all stuff that's ahead, but uh, I'm trying to keep things nice and simple. Okay, so I'll try not to actually play this game and uh, get hit three times. And boom, he gets hit. The doors open up, and sure enough, our scene is rerunning again. And uh, once more, once the uh, the game or the scene uh, resets, all these very vari variables go back to being uh, what they uh, previously were. And the nice little thing about uh, Sprite Kit is that uh, even if you try to write in something here like uh, what's it void. Or was it ID Dialog? I can't remember. It's 
says dialic return type must be correctly specified as void under uh, well let's see all right so maybe I had void correctly well, what I'm looking for is <laughs> is the message that tells me because I tried to do this earlier the message that tells me you can't dialic anything in an ARC game and ARC stands for automatic referencing oh, I don't know why it's not giving me the message well anyway it was nice to see that uh, you don't have to worry about releasing things or setting them to nil uh, you're just good to go at this point all right uh, sprite kit slash xcode they're gonna take care of the uh, all that fun memory management that was kind of a, a pain in the butt before and uh, here you go you got a nice little uh, scheme to work with and uh, maybe keep working with if you want to modify it further and I get to take a big break for the day